When a driver complained to Enzo Ferrari that his car wasn't very streamlined, he said, well, you know, aerodynamics are for people that can't build engines. Well, it's clear in 2009 that, that philosophy has completely changed. The winter that'll be behind me here, designed and built by Renzo Piano, is the state-of-the-art facility at Maranello. Over 2,200 kilowatts of power and blades with a diameter of over five meters. You need fantastic aerodynamics to be competitive in modern Formula One. More than 20 years ago, I used to work for Ferrari, a mechanic at one of their dealerships back in central England, a time when Enzo Ferrari himself was running the company. Looking back on those formative years now, I realize what a very special and privileged time it was. But even this relatively close association with the parent company never afforded my access to where I'm standing right now, the race bay, the heart of Maranello's Formula One racing empire. It's an absolutely incredible experience for me to be finally standing right here. But there are just some fantastic memories around here. Cars that have been built for Berger and Lacey, all of the Schumacher championship winning cars, all been built right here. And of course, now the cars for Felipe Massa, Kimi Raikkonen too, all built and assembled exactly where I'm standing. For most people, Ferrari means Formula One. And here at Maranello, we have a fantastic display of restored Formula One equipment, including the engineer's stand over here to my left and the refueling equipment on my right. And personally, I'm in love with this car. One of my personal favorites, the 641 John Barnard designed V12 Formula One car, elegantly styled. If you ever wondered what happened to old Ferrari Formula One cars after the season is finished and prior to the new cars being born, well, here's your answer. And here are just 50 of them in the F1 Clienti project here at Maranello. And I have to tell you guys, this is like walking into Aladdin's workshop. It is unbelievable, the treasures here on offer. To explain more about that, I'm joined by the technical manager of F1 Clienti, Andrea Galetti. Now, all of these old cars, and some of them not that old, I mean, only two or three years old, these Formula One cars here, they're all for private use? Yes, correct. Actually, we are um, delivering now 2007 car. So, as you can see, all these cars are from, uh, from uh, the 70, actually from the 70 to the recent time. And uh, everybody can drive this car because they are all in a running condition and uh, all already sold and uh, in a property of a customer. They decide to leave the car here for storage, for maintenance, so they can just come and drive it whenever they want and whenever we organize the event at the track. So, Andrea, now let's talk about price. This is a business, of course. If I wanted to... Let's say we talked about the Prost car before, one of my favorites, the 640, 641, 642 era, those John Barnard design cars. I like them a beautiful lot. Shape. Yes, beautiful uh, shape. Beautiful shape. If I wanted to buy one of those cars off you guys, what's it going to cost me? They say generally it can go from 400,000 euro up to 650 or 750. And if you go in a newer car, for example, a 2000 era, uh, say generally the price is around 1 million, 1 million and a half. That can basically go up to 2.5, 2.9 if it's really the most winning car driven by Schumacher in a, a most, uh, say, winning era. A little earlier on when we were talking about the history of selling cars at Ferrari, uh, you came in with an incredible document. Um, explaining a little bit about Ferrari himself many years ago, talking about selling his old Formula One cars, presumably, to, to, to finance the next car coming along the following year. Can you tell me a little bit about this amazing Actually, document? Uh, looking at the old documents, uh, and uh, just to get all the blueprint and uh, information ne that necessary to, to remake car, I end up with this uh, very, very nice document that was like a... Um, a little bit of description from uh, approved by Enzo Ferrazzi, uh, as you can see on the, on the violet ink, uh, yeah. uh, why you should buy a Formula One no? for collector. They says uh, you should buy a Formula One uh, Ferrari in, in used instead of a house uh, for holiday because, uh, of course, uh, the reason are, uh, is much more enjoyable, is nicer, and uh, is uh, less expensive, but only if uh, you don't use it at the track. <laughs> so, and uh, I think he knows the business uh, since that time. 
when I when, when we were talking about this document and you said, yeah, I'll go and fetch it and bring it in and show you. And I, you know, I saw the violent ink on it. And I know from my, my little bit of knowledge of Ferrari and working with Ferrari back in the 80s that Enzo always used to use violet ink to sign his signature. And I saw the violet ink and I started to tremble a little bit thinking, wow, you've, you're actually going to show me an original signed document from Enzo Ferrari and you have it right there. Andrea, I can't thank you enough. I mean, this is absolutely superb for me as a mechanic to look around at these wonderful, wonderful cars. And what you guys are doing and your ability to do the restoration is just staggering. And again, thank you so much for sharing with us this wonderful document from Enzo Ferrari. Thank you. A pleasure to be here. Stick around. Join me for more from Maranello right after the break. I'm here at the Gestione Sportiva. It's from here that all Formula One activities are organized. We're going to go inside and talk to Stefano Domenicali, the Formula One team principal. All Formula One teams have their own emblem. It's a requirement of the sport and regulations that emblem features on each car produced by the team. Now, there's no question that the most famous emblem in the history of Formula One has to be that of Ferraris with a prancing horse. But it's a very complex design once you start to look at the details of it. And to give more of an explanation to that, I'm pleased to say I'm joined by Stefano Domenicali, team principal of Ferrari. Stefano, can you just walk us through what we see with that famous Ferrari shield? Well, I mean, uh, the emblem is famous all around the world, but uh, in, in uh, the shape, in uh, the colors that are inside, there is all the history of Ferrari. Basically, uh, you know, on the top you can see the color of the Italian flag. Then uh, the, the background of the, of the shield is a yellow, that is the, the color of the town of Modena. And uh, the prancing horse was a gift uh, of the family of uh, uh, the very famous Italian uh, uh, aviation commander, uh, Francesco Baracca, that was uh, the number one pilot during the First uh, World War. And the family wanted to give this emblem to Mr. Ferrari uh, as a sign of uh, respect when he started uh, to, to build up the team. And this is, uh, yeah. I, I would say that is maybe one of the most uh, recognized emblem all around the world. What does Ferrari mean to this small town of Marinella? You have hundreds, thousands of people working for you here. It must be a great employment opportunity for the people of the town. How do the people of Marinello react to Ferrari being in that little town? Well, I mean, I think that Maranello is famous uh, not only in Italy, but uh, all around the world just for Ferrari. I mean, if you take away with all respect of all the other business around this area uh, that are important, like ceramics, I mean, if you take out uh, this company, I mean, there is only the Catholic Church in the middle of the town, that's it. So it's really part of the history of this town and a part of the region. So you can feel it if you speak with all the people that are living in Maranello, they speak about Ferrari. You guys have got two, to me, what appear very different, distinct personalities. Kimi Raikkonen, Felipe Massa, chalk and cheese when you put them side by side. Both very good, gifted drivers, talented in the cockpit. How do you, Stefano, as team principal, manage and motivate these two completely different personalities to ensure you get the best out of your drivers? Well, first of all, as you said, it's correct to see that these two drivers have different uh, approach to their life. They are different characters, but they are really good, good guys, working together in the best way that they can, because they know that when you come to be a Ferrari driver, you have to make sure that the team is the most important thing. When you speak about Felipe, Brazilian, more Latin, uh, it, it's in a way closer to the Italian uh, feeling, and uh, so for the guys, maybe it's much easier to get closer to him. Kimi is totally different. Finish. Of course, uh, we needed to understand what was the, the way to communicate with the guy that uh, has his personality, but he's a very loyal guy, very straightforward, not a lot of, uh, I cannot say the right word, but not a lot of uh, uh, wording around, just very straightforward, very, very, very intelligent and very talented. Well, Stefano, good luck to Ferrari. And... Thank you very much, and uh, I just take the opportunity to say hello to all our American, U.S. Uh, fan and supporter because we feel it. I really hope that we'll be able to come to U.S. very soon. Never say never. Looking forward to come. We have driver interviews and a whole lot more. So join us again at Maranello after the break. <laughs>